Ooh, boy, this was almost one of them Ravens games, wasn't it? It was looking like it because uh, Ravens were up by three. And they, they running the ball. They running the ball to kill the clock. And it's like, okay, Ravens, there we go. We got Gus Edwards back. So that just has changed the entire dynamic of the Baltimore Ravens run game. And Justice Hill, he cuts, cuts back across the field, makes somebody miss. And Greg Newsom, bop, gave that ball a fruit punch, knocked it out. And it had a lot of us thinking like, oh, oh, oh yeah, there go those Ravens. But... They did end up closing it out. Um, and that sequence of events, which was just crazy. Um, there was the uh, the field goal, the false start uh, on the field goal. Um, I think it was from the center putting his head down and not snapping the ball. I think that's considered false start. I was so confused on that, that whole thing because uh, I just knew the penalty was going to go against the Ravens. And I was shocked. I was shocked when they said, oh, the penalty was actually in favor of the rape. Maybe it was like a makeup call for that non uh, rough in the passer with Jadavian Clowney uh, had dragged Lamar down by the horse collar and they did a no call. Maybe, maybe that's what that was. They were like, all right, we, we got these boys. Um, and then even the uh, still at the end of the game, first Marcus Peters gets beat deep over top. And I was just like, wow. Um, and then he gets beat again deep over top. And I'm like, wow. But then the second time, they're like, oh, no, no, no. It's a penalty. Offensive pass interference. And truth be told, we've seen a lot worse that doesn't get called. I was shocked that they called that. I was just shocked that they called that. I couldn't believe it. But again, maybe it was just makeup calls. But anyway, this game um, it is the 2022 Ravens. Straight up, the 2022 Ravens. This was a game that they technically did win, but again, like I said earlier, it just it didn't feel like it. Grateful for the win. Ravens needed to win, especially going into Tampa in a couple of days, uh, facing a Tampa team that just got whooped. Whoa, 21 to three? They got whooped, dog walked, beat down. So they're gonna be looking to bounce back at home in a big way. Um, so Ravens definitely they needed this a lot. Um, Gus Edwards, uh, it was wonderful seeing him in his return. Two touchdowns. And you see, with Gus Edwards, Gus Edwards completely changes everything about the way that the Ravens call plays. Reason I say that is because he, he gives you a, a significant quality upgrade as a short yardage back. Short yardage back, Kenyon Drake, no, nah, he's not that. Justice Hill, that's not really him. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, he can be, um, but this is the role that's suited for Gus Edwards. He is that perfect short yardage back where you know that ball's going forward. And as we know, the Ravens have struggled. They've struggled with the execution in the short yardage. They struggled with the play calling in the short yardage. But with Gus Edwards being there, that, that gives you a big answer to that question. All right, what are we going to do on third and one? Fourth and one, in this case, fourth and goal. Rashad Bateman had caught that third down pass right at the one-yard line. And Ravens were like, no, 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 no. We going for it. We going for it. Not a Lamar Jackson sneak. We ain't going to pass the ball. No, we're we not going to do a, a, a sweep, a toss play, I mean. We're not going to pitch it to a running back. No, we, we running that ball straight up with Gus Edwards. Welcome back. And Gus Edwards was certainly, I didn't think that he was going to get as many touches. Like I, I said in the stream that we did um, the night before the game, I said I, I expected Gus Edwards to get maybe like six, seven touches. I didn't even think he was getting 10, though. But they shut me all the way up, and it made a big difference. He had 16 for 66, averaged 4.1 yards per carry. So Gus, he did his thing uh, against the Cleveland Browns. And the Ravens really, um, really threw out the game. They were taking advantage of, of a Browns defense that really wasn't really stopping them run too much. When you look at the other numbers, of course, Lamar, you knew he was going to get his rushing in. He had 10 carries for 59 yards. Uh, Justice Hill had 5 for 26. Uh, Ken Drake, he struggled. He had 11 for 5. I guess the, the Browns were like, no, man. Hey, Drake, we saw what you did against them Giants. We not the Giants, so you ain't doing that to us. Everybody else, y'all get y'all yards, but no, Drake, nah. You, you, ain't, you ain't popping off two weeks in a row. 
Um, and then even Mark Andrews, he had the one rush for four yards. I guess Greg Roman and them, they were like, look, man. Yeah, okay, y'all Brown, y'all, y'all not gonna let Mark Andrews go a whole game without touching the ball at all. Yeah, I, we ain't having that. That's our guy. That's our go-to guy. So we're gonna find a way to get him involved some way, somehow. Even had Mark Andrews be a quarterback for a play. They had him do the sneak and then the will actually be a quarterback for two plays because he pitched the ball to uh Lamar Jackson on that big run. So yeah, man, it's uh the run game was doing this thing. And the pass game, mm, the pass game, looking at the numbers, it wasn't pretty. Uh, nine for 16, 120 yards, um, no touchdowns, no picks. Lamar took three sacks. Um, so the pass game, it was uh, had some nice plays. The pass uh, to Duvernay down the sideline, big catch, that was a nice play. The screen to Duvernay uh, on the opposite side of the field, uh, that was a nice play. The Rashad Bateman catch. Um, not not just the one that went to the one yard line, but the one where he uh Lamar was waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, then I guess Rashad Bateman finally came open. Lamar hit him. Bateman caught it, made a couple people miss it, and got a lot of yak. That was a beautiful thing to see. It's a beautiful thing to see. Um, but it just seemed like the pass game was limited. Now, I I wonder why the pass game was limited today. Um, sixteen passes. Um. Uh, because I, I, I think about it being a couple of different things, especially when you look at the past couple of games. I wonder if the Ravens staff, they just really told Lamar, look, reel it in. Reel it in. We don't want you out there playing hero ball. Just reel it in. We want you to manage the game. I wonder. I, I really wonder if they told him to do that. Or that was their style of coaching going into this game. Hey, no, reel it in. Because they may be thinking about the, the, the interception last week against the Giants. They may be thinking about the interception from two weeks ago uh, against the, uh, the Bengals with the, that overthrow. And, and even maybe the missed throws. And maybe they're like, you know what? Let's, let's tone it down. Let's tone it down. Could it also have been that, hey, the, the running game was working. And when the running game is working, hey, you ain't got to pass the ball as much. But I just, I just wonder. Because it just seemed like... Seemed like Lamar in this game, like he was just dejected. Like he was just out of it. Uh, mentally, for sure. And, and especially when you look at the presser. Because I watched the presser uh, a little bit ago, and I was like, ooh. He just, usually after a win, especially a close win, a division win, you see Lamar smiling, energetic and all that. Ha ha, da da da, oh yeah, we did it, da 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 da. But he wasn't like that. He wasn't like that. So it just seems like something is up, man. Seems like something was definitely up today that where it hasn't been up the past couple of weeks. I don't know. Or maybe it's something that's just been building. I don't know. I don't know. But it just Lamar was not Lamar today. And it was clear as day. It was clear. Uh, when he spoke, the way that he kept highlighting, we only passed the ball 16 times. We only had 16 passes. He repeated that. So when you repeat something, that's usually to put some emphasis on it. So I think something there is just something ain't adding up, man. It's really not. Um, but we'll see how things move uh, moving forward. Um, the Ravens, again, I always say an, an ugly win is better than a pretty loss any day of the week because you're winning. You're winning. Um, but Ravens, they, they still got to get better. They still got work to do. But it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's like a bittersweet thing when you have a lot of issues, um, but you still win. Uh, so, but it's important that those issues get corrected. Uh, one of those issues was the run game. It took a nice step forward. Um, today, uh, another one of those issues is a pass game. It was, it was just enough, but it can't be that. It can't be like that going forward. It it, it really can't be. Um, hopefully, Bateman, um, he continue getting back in the groove. Thing I know he had to drop today. I know he had to drop, and uh, drops are unfortunate, but they happen. 
Um, Deshaun Jackson, I would definitely expect him. I thought he was going to play today, but I would definitely expect him to play uh, against the Bucks. Um, Because Ravens just, they need a spark, man. And something that we talked about uh, in the stream the day before the game, what Deshaun Jackson brings is what Ravens are missing, and they're missing that fire, man. They're missing that fire on offense. They don't have that from anybody right now. They're just lacking that so bad. And I know Deshaun Jackson, 35 years old, um, obviously way past his prime. Can't expect him to be the same player, but, man, and it's like we, we signed, signed this guy in. Not that we got all these crazy expectations, but almost expecting him to come in and sort of be sort of a savior for the team almost as far as their attitude. Because it seems like right now, it seems like these Ravens are desperate for something. They, they, they are desperate for leadership. They're desperate to get some personality, some attitude, some swag. They're desperate for it because it's lacking. This whole, I know, that, oh, yeah, it was a 10-year anniversary of the Super Bowl team. I just thought the timing was weird. And I don't know if this was planned ahead of time, so who knows. But I just thought, I just thought it was kind of weird, man. Like, oh, you okay? Y'all bringing a whole Super Bowl team in for this uh this Ravens and Browns game and da 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 and uh, okay, cool. Hey, whatever works, right? Whatever works. But I just um I don't know. Like I said, it may, maybe it was planned ahead of time. I don't know. I don't know. But I just thought the timing of it was just weird, man. Um, but hey, maybe that that worked a little bit. Because the Ravens, they had a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter with like 10 minutes left, and they actually won the game. They almost, uh, well, yeah, almost went the other way, but they ended up winning the game. Um, but I guess Ravens, like, they pulling out all the stops in order to really try to sort of get the team back. Because it seemed like the, the team is... Not necessarily close to derailing, but it just does still does not seem, even in this win, it still does not seem like they all there. It just doesn't to me, man. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Now, uh, defense. No Patrick Queen. This was a nice game from Patrick Queen. Um, we would love to see more games like this. Uh, it, you know what's funny? If I, I feel like Ravens pass rush like they got a personal vendetta against me. Reason being, I could not catch the first three quarters of this game live. I only got to see uh, the end of the third quarter and the, and the entire fourth quarter live. That whole time, I ain't get to see no pass rush. None. None. But apparently, during the first three quarters, they were going off. They were going off. Justin Houston, oh, man, his, his return, his presence was felt so much in being back. Him getting not one but two sacks. Two sacks. It's like, man, we, <laughs> we missed you. So we knew we missed him. When he went out, oh, we missed him from jump. But him being back, it just made us miss him that much more. Because we, we knew how valuable he is to Ravens pass rush. Calais Campbell. With a little knockout in the Dolphin way with the scoop up. Like, okay, little teamwork. That's how you do it. That's how you do it, baby. Um, Patrick Queen, he got him a second. And then Kyle Hamilton, man. They sent Geno Stone and Kyle Hamilton on a blitz. Geno Stone just missed him. But Kyle Hamilton with an excellent cleanup sack. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. I, I, I guess if Raven's not going to use him as a safety, they're going to use him as a pass rusher, right? But anyway, anyway. Good, nice getting a win for the Ravens. Nice getting a win. Um, secondary in this game, they 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 were all right. I, I would call them all right overall. They were all right. Um, some ups, some downs. They were all right. Uh, Jacoby Brissett early on. Um, Browns just their first couple of drives. They were doing what they wanted to do, straight up. They were, they were doing whatever they wanted to do. They are like, oh, we, yeah, we're going to run the ball. We're going to get a first down. Here you go, Chubb. Take it. First down. First down. First down. First down. First down. Touchdown. Touchdown. Um, and Chubb really, again, we know Chubb is, is a problem. He's a big problem. Uh, but Jacoby Brissett, it's like the, the, the Ravens were giving Jacoby Brissett confidence, man. 
And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You, you want to let him know, give him reminders like, hey, you're the backup quarterback. You, you, you don't need to be getting all these numbers against us. You don't need to be getting all these statistics against us and all that. Because I think early on, he was like seven for seven early on in the game. And, whoa, hold up now. This is Jacoby Brissett or, or is this Deshaun Watson. Who, who are we going against? Who are we playing against? But Ravens, sometimes they, they get in this habit where they make the backups and whatnot. They make them look good. They make them look like stars, starters, and I, it's, it's got to be much better, man. It's got to be a lot better. Um, Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. And that, that what was it, a fifth-round pick that the Browns gave up for him? It had definitely been worth it for them. Um, he's a baller. Excellent route runner. Uh, good hands. Um, and he made some plays again. Back to that 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 fourth quarter play. Well, the the plays, the drive where he was just dogging uh, Marcus Peters. Um, again, if not for that pass interference, then who knows <laughs> how that game would have went, man. Um, looking at Jacoby Brissett, number twenty two for twenty seven, two hundred fifty eight yards. Got sacked five times, but twenty two for twenty seven for two hundred fifty eight yards. Jacoby Brissett, man. Jacoby Brissett. Now, he's been around the league for a little minute. He got plenty of experience and whatnot, but uh, it's, uh, it's unacceptable, man. It's unacceptable. Uh, Chubb, I mean, I think most of us figured that Chubb would go off against the Ravens' run defense. So, it, him getting, he got 16 for 91. That was no surprise. That was no surprise at all. Um, but, yeah, man. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. I, I, with the whole, he got six catches for 71 yards. That's cool. But one of his best plays came when the Ravens had to punt the ball late in the fourth quarter. And Kevon Seymour, Kevon Seymour was running to down it inside the five yard line, running, running, running. Donovan People Jones went, walk, laid him out. Oh, <laughs> touchback. I was like, wow, boy, that was such a great play from Donovan People Jones, man. That was a great play from him. Um, he, he he laid out Kevon Seymour. I felt bad. I was like, oh, man. Yikes. Yikes. Um, so great special teams play. Shout out to special teams, by the way. Devin DuVernay with a huge uh, punt return. He just slipped up. Just got tripped up. Uh, Could have went for a touchdown, but he just got slipped up. Um, but I think that led to... Did that lead to a touchdown or a field goal? Was that the... Uh, I think that led to the um, the fourth down Gus Edwards touchdown run. I believe that was the punt return where they got that, I think. I'm not 100% sure now. I, I don't remember now. But um, shout out to Justin Tucker. Just doing his Justin Tucker things, man. Shout out to him. Uh, he is continues to be amazing. Uh, continues like, man, imagine the Ravens without Justin Tucker. Ooh, that would be a scary sight. You, you don't want to imagine it. You don't want to think about it. Um, and shout out to Leak. Malik Harrison, also special teams play. Uh, and and I, love, I love hearing stuff like this. I love hearing like uh, in, in-game stories with people, they were paying attention. Because Malik Harrison, he talked about how he saw that, uh, I think his name is Cade York, whatever the Browns kicker's name is. Um, he said that he saw that the Browns kicker was putting this low trajectory on the ball. So he said that he, he saw that early in the game and he felt like he could get one. Now, if he didn't get it, I'm sure he probably wouldn't have heard this story, but he got it. So, shout out to Leak. Um, and he said, he said the ball actually hit him in the face. He said it whacked him in the face. Now, I was thinking, like, man, when they said the ball was blocked, I remember watching the game, and the ball, it still went high up in the air. So, I'm thinking, man, I thought that it hit his fingers. When they said that Malik Harrison blocked it, I thought it hit his fingers. I'm thinking, like, oh, man, his fingers must be in some pain. But he said it hit him in the face. But So, he got the helmet, so he, he should be just fine. Um, but good play, keeping your head in the game. Get it, keeping your head in the game because it was his head that blocked the field goal. Anyway, but yeah, man, he's Ravens, man. Um, something's got to give, man. Something has got to give, uh, especially with the offense. With the offense, the defense, they again, they seem to be slowly but surely finding their way. They starting to get into a much better groove. Um, we would like to see them. Just stop a ball because sometimes the defense just flat out looks like they just laying down uh, and they letting the p- opponents just run right past them. 
Just go right past them. But then <laughs> offense, sometimes they look like they just laying down and they going to sleep. But um, defense overall, they've been finding their groove a lot better than the offense has. Um, it would be a beautiful thing uh, when we see a complete game from this team. A complete game. Um, because we... Well, in the Jets game, I guess that was probably the most complete game that the Ravens have played this season. Um, but yeah, so we we got to see more. Definitely, I think. Um, that, oh, one thing in this game from the defense, they they gave up more big plays in this game than I've seen them give up in a long time, ever since the Patriots game, really, because they ain't been giving up no big plays after that Patriots game. They stopped. Against the Bills, nope. Against the Bengals, nope. Against the Giants, nope. They they have not been giving up big play, big plays over top. The deep passing plays, they haven't been giving none of that up. But this game, uh, it started falling apart a little bit. But again, I'm, I'm glad they ended up uh, getting it together in the long run. But the team's got to be better, man. Team 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 has got to be better. Uh, Lamar. Lamar got to be better. Um, the receivers, the pass catchers, they got to be better. Greg Roman, um, they 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 got to be better, man. They got they guys to be better. Off offense for sure. I feel like with the offense, offense they 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 got to fix these issues, man. They got to fix it to where they can play more complete games, where they can complement each other. Like and again, if something's working. By all means, hey, stick with it. Of course, you're going to mix it up a little bit, but stick with it. Like, run game where, hey, okay, run that ball. And they ran that ball. So, like, okay, cool, man. Run that ball. I like it. Because um, you don't want to force something just to force it. Again, if run game is working, hey, by all means, do your thing. Pass game working, by all means, let it do its thing. But you just want to see more complimentary football, in my opinion. In my opinion. Um... But they got the win. So, on the Tampa Bay. So, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we out.